Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu. In this video, I'll show you the highlights of what's new in Lightroom. Adobe has released Lightroom CC 2015 for Creative Cloud subscribers and Lightroom 6 for those who want to purchase a standalone version without a subscription. The only difference between the two at this point on the release date is that Lightroom CC includes syncing photos to mobile devices and the web, which CC subscribers also had with Lightroom 5. If you're not sure which to purchase, read my blog article discussing the two. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the big new features and a few of the smaller ones as well, for complete instruction in all of the new features and changes with all the details you need to know to use them successfully, you can download from my website my free Learn Lightroom CC and Lightroom 6 New Features video series, which even has some practice files with it. Before I get into features, I'll mention that in order to use these new versions of Lightroom, you have to have 64-bit Windows 7 or higher, or Mac OS 10.8 or higher. That's Mountain Lion, Mavericks, or Yosemite. The software will not install or run on older operating systems. Let's get started. The first new feature I'm excited about is the ability to merge multiple exposures using HDR, which I used to have to turn to Photoshop or another program for. I'll select two or more RAW files. In this case, I have two exposures, one to capture the shadows and the other to capture the highlights. I'll click on the first and then hold the Shift key down as I click on the last. Then I'll right click or control click with a one button mouse and choose Photo Merge HDR. Lightroom creates a preview of the result and I'll pause the video while this finishes. Now I'll choose to have it auto align the images in case my camera is moved between shots. Auto Tone simply gives me a head start on developing the photo. Notice if I turn it off and that on that it darkens the highlights and brightens the shadows so that I can see all the detail. I can always undo this or do more editing in the develop module. Now if elements in my photo were moving as I shot the sequence, like trees blowing in the wind, I can use this deghosting feature. I'll go ahead and merge. And we can see in the status bar that it's creating the file in the background. And here's my result. Notice that it's a DNG file. It's just as much of a RAW file as my originals, with all the benefits and flexibility of a RAW file. This sets Lightroom's HDR merge apart from Photoshop's Photomatics and others, which produce rendered TIFF or PSD files, so I'm really excited about this. Now let's use the Photo Merge Panorama feature to stitch together two or more photos with significant overlap to create a panorama. I've selected my first photo, I'll hold the Shift key down as I click to select my last, then I'll right click inside one of them and choose Photo Merge Panorama. Lightroom will generate the preview here, which will take a minute because I had so many source files. And then I can choose from various merge methods. I'll choose the one I like the best, and then I can choose to have Lightroom crop right here, or I can crop later in the develop module. I'll click on Merge, and again in the status bar, we see that Lightroom is creating the panorama. At this point, I could go create more panoramas or do other work while it's finishing. I'll just pause the video. And here's my result. Again, it's a DNG file, so if my originals were RAW files, this is still a RAW file. Now for HDR and panoramas, you'll want to know some details about file naming, develop work that is applied or ignored, working with deghosting, finding your HDR and panorama files, and more, so do download my longer video series. The next new big feature is face tagging for assigning people keywords to faces in photos. I'll go to a collection that has people, and then I'll go to the new people view. I can click on the icon or type the shortcut O. So we see in the status bar that Lightroom is going through those photos, searching for faces. And of course, we see the faces here in the preview window. At this point, I can click and add names. Now I like to do last name, first name. So I'll do Smith, Amy, and I'll hit enter or return. And now we see Amy Smith up here in named people. I'll do another one here and I'll hit enter. 
Now I can continue to name people here in People View, or I can select an individual named person and go to Single Person View. At this point, I see the faces that I've confirmed, but then I also start to see similar faces. So here in Similar, I can click on the check mark next to any that truly are of Amy. Then I can ignore the rest here and go back to People View or name this second girl right here. Now, once I'm done naming all of the unnamed people, it's important to then go to Loop View and go through each one of your photos, making sure that Lightroom, in fact, has found the faces. So on this one it has, if I go to the next one it has, I'll just use the right arrow key, and you'll see here that Lightroom didn't detect this face. It's not good on profiles, backs of the head, or partial faces. So with the Face Tagging Region tool selected here, I'll click and drag to add a face region, and then I'll name this person. And when I'm done, I'll go back to Grid View so that I see photos and not just faces. Now this face tagging feature is actually fairly complex. There's lots of details you want to know about what to do with old people keywords, how to work efficiently through your faces, what shortcuts are available, and more that I don't have time to show you here. So again, do download my free video series and watch the two videos on this topic. Now I'll go to the Import dialog to mention a small addition that we have here, if I open up the File Handling section, you'll see that we can add these photos to a collection right here during Import. Of course, we can always add photos to a collection later, as we're used to doing. Now, if you're converting your RAW files to DNG as you import, you'll find that the import process is faster than it used to be, because the actual conversion to DNG now happens after import in a separate process that runs in the background. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. Next, I'll cover some slideshow changes. I'll go to a different collection and then click on the slideshow module and I'll scroll down on the right hand side here to show you that we now have Ken Burns style panning and zooming. If I click on the check mark and then I preview this, you can see that it's zooming out and zooming in on photos in that Ken Burns style. I'll go ahead and stop this. Another nice new addition here in the slideshow module is the ability to add up to 10 music tracks. So we used to only be able to add one. So I'm going to click on the plus here, and here on my desktop, I'm going to select two tracks. So I'll click on the first, then hold the Command key down on Mac, or the Control key on PC, then I'll click on a second one, and then I'll choose and then I can click and drag an individual track to move it up or down in the list, so you can rearrange them. Finally, I'll show you that we have the ability to sync slides to the music. What this means is that Lightroom is going to analyze the beat of the music and change the slides along with the beat. I'll go ahead and preview this with the music. So you saw that they transitioned pretty fast along with the music. Next, in the web module, Flash is out and HTML5 is in. This makes all the web galleries you can create here compatible with mobile devices, which of course is critical these days. Here in the layout style, we have the new grid gallery, square gallery, and track galleries. And with any of them, I can click on an individual thumbnail to get to loop view and scroll through the photos. So clean modern choices, and of course I go through all the details of them in my downloadable video series. Next, there have been several performance improvements. Most don't require doing anything different. Some of the bigger ones include export speed, moving photos between folders that used to be really slow, import speed on Macs, thumbnail loading after import, and importing when copying is DNG, which I already mentioned. Now the big new performance feature is GPU acceleration, which with compatible graphics cards, Lightroom can take advantage of its processing unit to do some processing faster. Currently it can be used to improve slider performance here in the develop module. 
It's particularly useful for 4 and 5K high resolution monitors. So if you normally experience lags between sliding the sliders and seeing the results here in the preview windows, go into Preferences by going to Lightroom on a Mac or Edit on a PC, and then Preferences. And then on the Performance tab, check the box to use the graphics processor. Now if your graphics card is not supported, you'll see a message here. Now the big downside to using GPU acceleration is that it can take your photos longer to load. So longer loading time, more slider responsiveness. So I'd recommend trying it and seeing if it makes a difference for you and if the trade-off is worth it to you. Next, I'll show you a few useful new features here in the Develop module. In both the Graduated Filter tool and the Radio Filter, we can now brush in additions or subtractions. I'll select the Graduated Filter and I'll add clarity and contrast and I'll click and drag up along the beach line here so that I'm affecting the bottom of the photo. And I'll turn Show Edit Pins to Auto so we don't see the lines as I move my mouse out of the photo. Now I like how the Graduated Filter gave me such a quick result here, but I don't like how it's affected the water over here. But that's easy to fix now. I'll simply click on the new Brush tab and scroll down a little bit and choose Erase. And then I'll click and drag to erase away the filter's effect in this area. If I turn on the mask here, you can see what area is now affected. And I see that I've missed erasing some here. So this is a very nice addition to the graduated filter and the radial filter tools. I'm going to click back to put the graduated filter tool away. Now we also have a new pet eye tool. Let me go to a photo of a pet. And then I'm going to click to zoom in. Now the Pet Eye tool is located inside the Red Eye tool, so I'll click on it, and then click on Pet Eye, and then I can click and drag to tell Lightroom to fix this area here. Now at this point, I can click and drag on the edge to make the fix larger. And then I'll turn the tool overlay to Auto, move my mouse out of the photo so we can see the result. Now I don't think this result is great, but it's certainly a lot quicker than using the adjustment brush to get something more precise. Notice that we have a little catch light here. That's added with this add catch light check mark. I'll put the red eye tool away and I'll click to zoom out. I'm going to show you two more quick things in the adjustment brush. The adjustment brush allows us to paint in changes. I'm going to double click on the word effect just to reset the sliders. And just for a quick demo, I'm going to go with positive exposure and I'm going to paint the dog here. Now one thing we can now do is reposition where we've painted. If I click and drag on the pin, I can move my mask. So that can help me to fine tune adjustments that I've made. I'm going to hit the delete key to delete that because it wasn't particularly attractive. And then I'm going to show you that if you click and let go and then hold the shift key down, and click and let go somewhere else, you can draw a straight line. So if you're working up against the edges of buildings, for example, that can be very handy. Okay, so I've skipped over all kinds of smaller but potentially useful additions that if I covered them all, it would make this video go on far too long. Do read my blog post for a list of all that's new and download my free video series, Learn Lightroom CC and Lightroom 6 New Features to master all the new features and changes. I'm Laura Shue.